Welcome to this lesson. We are going to talk about Flutter file structure. When you open a Flutter project and it is your first time you are developing a Flutter application, it could be confusing. You don't know what the structure of a Flutter project is and where you should start developing and where you should add your files and where you should install some plugins and so on. So in this lesson, we are going through the Flutter projects and see what are the components of Flutter projects. So first is the lib folder. This folder has the main code for the Flutter application. So when the Flutter runs and where, when the application is launched, the OS, whether Android or iOS, looks for this file. Inside the lib folder, the main file is the file that operating systems look for when an application is launched. The iOS or Android operating systems look for this file, main file, and then goes to respective screens based on the instructions that are available in the main file. So let's see the lib folder. Inside a Flutter project, you have this lib folder. Inside lib folder, there is a main.dart. This is the file that is executed first. The next one is pubspec.yaml. This file contains all the necessary plugins and packages for the Flutter app. You can install a new plugin by listing it here. It also includes any photos or pictures like logo or fonts that you include in your application. So if I open pubspec.yaml, which is available here, you can see that we have under dependencies, we have in this case and in this project, we have many plugins. For example, we have Cupertino icons, which is a default plugins available for any new projects. And then we have other plugins in this project available. Also inside the pubspec.yaml file, we have the font section, which includes all the customized fonts that you need to use in your application. And also assets. Assets is the folder that we are going to discuss later that includes all the photos and images of your application. You declare the folder here so the application knows where to find the fonts and where to find the images. You just need to set these plugins once and you install them in your application once by clicking on pub get and the application is going to run the plugins and use it inside your application. The next one is Android and iOS folders. These folders contain codes for specific operating system. You may need to change or add some code specific to Android or iOS. If we check the projects, in this project we have Android folder and we have iOS folder. If you need to change any specific file, for example in the Android, you may want to change permissions, for example, or intent. You need to go to this Android folder and specifically change that setting for this operating system. In a similar way, you can go to the iOS folder and change the settings specific to iOS. And you have additional fol folders that you may use in your application. For example, it is a common practice to add assets folder, as we mentioned before, that includes any logo or pictures. It is also common to have a font folder and if your application is complex and have many custom made widgets, you can create folders for specific code and specific components. For example, one folder for each screen on your application or one folder for all your custom made widgets. For example, in this project, 
we have a folder called assets. Inside assets, we have different pictures and logos to use in this project. Also, we have fonts folder. Inside the fonts folder, we have different types of fonts that we need to use in our applications. And as mentioned before, after creating these folders, you need to mention them in the popspec.yaml file in the font section and in the asset section and additionally you may have folders inside your lib folder lib folder is a folder that you write your codes for your applications and main.dart is the first and starting point of your application so when you create a new project the only file you have is main.dart here in this case we have one file for each page of the application for example in the main file there is instruction that the home page is my home page so for the my home page which is the next screen on our application we have created a separate file inside the my home page there is a link to sign in page and for that we create another file for that screen and after that the application goes to another screen so we have another file for the other screen in this way you can easily divide your applications into different components and different pages so if there is something wrong of, or there is any error, you can easily go to a specific page and troubleshoot. Also inside the lib folder, we have the folder called components. The name of the folder, you can set any name you want. It's not specific to type of the file you want to create. For example, in this case, you, we call it components or you can call it widgets or you can call it any name you want inside the components we have constants we have my drawers which is the menu for our app our application that slides from left side of the application inside this we can specify what we need to include for example we include feedback we include rate this application we include about us this is separate component of our application and we can make it separate inside a folder so it is easier to refer to when we want to change th something of or is if there is an error we also have rounded button and sign in button because each button is highly customizable and each element in your flutter application is highly customizable instead of adding all this code inside the main file we define them here in a specific file file and then we refer to this file in the main code it is much easier and it is more manageable if you want to edit something or if there is an error you want to troubleshoot so this is the structure of a Flutter application and Flutter projects. So next time you want to start a project, you know where to start. And if you want to add an image or if you want to add a font, you know how to add them. Or if you want to install a plugin, you know how to install a plugin and where to go to install a plugin. I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next lesson.